Russia suffered thousands of casualties while gaining little new territory in Kharkiv. Russia is unlikely to make significant territorial gains in Ukraine in the coming months. Its poorly trained forces are struggling to break through Ukrainian defenses reinforced by Western weaponry. The New York Times reports this, citing U.S. officials. Throughout the spring and early summer, Russian troops tried to take territory outside of Kharkiv and renew their offensive in eastern Ukraine to capitalize on the capture of Avdiivka. Russia suffered thousands of casualties while gaining little new territory. Russia's troubles represent a significant shift in the dynamics of the war, which have favored Moscow in recent months. Russian troops continue to attack, but their gradual progress is slowed by the Ukrainians' strong positions. The coming months will not be easy for Ukraine, the newspaper writes. But the leaders of the alliance, who gather in Washington this week for the 75th anniversary of the founding of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, can legitimately claim that their efforts to strengthen Ukraine are working. Ukrainian forces are relieved and face tough months of fighting ahead, but a major Russian breakthrough is now unlikely, said Michael Kaufman, a senior fellow in the Russia and Eurasia program at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, who recently visited Ukraine. Concerns over Russia's acquisition of weapons, particularly missiles, drones and parts to make them from Iran, North Korea and China loom over the summit. In the third year of a devastating war, there are real concerns about Ukraine's ability to maintain its infrastructure, including its power grid, in the face of Russian attacks. But the biggest of them may be US policy toward Ukraine after the presidential elections this fall. While Russia is unable to seize significant swathes of Ukraine, the prospects for Kiev to retake most of the territory are also diminishing. Ukraine is focused on developing its defenses and striking deep into Russia's rear. Former intelligence officer Eric Ciaramella said it had become clear over the past 18 months that neither Russia nor Ukraine has the ability to significantly change the battle lines. The United States, he said, has always defined its strategic objective as a Ukraine that is democratic, prosperous, European and secure. The United States and its allies will need to make long-term investments to give Ukraine the ability to hold its ground, wear down Russia and inflict damage both Sierra Mella and current U.S. officials say, This is still a very unstable scenario. This is why Western leaders also really need to focus on integrating Ukraine into European and transatlantic security structures. Sierra Mella said, Some officials say that even without formally returning its land, Ukraine could still emerge victorious in the war, moving closer to NATO and Europe. American officials acknowledge that Russia could make significant progress, if it made major strategic changes, such as expanding its military conscription and training program. Thanks to supplies of electronic components from China, drones from Iran and missiles and artillery from North Korea, Russia has armed its army but lacks the personnel to make a significant breakthrough. NATO needs additional 35 to 50 brigades to implement its new plan to defend itself against Russian attacks, Reuters has reported with reference to an unnamed military source. According to the source, creating up to 50 brigades is quite challenging, considering the fact that a brigade consists of 3,000 to 7,000 soldiers. It is unclear from where NATO allies might draw the additional personnel for 35 to 50 brigades. NATO's new defense plan is the alliance's first major defense plan in the past 30 years, with officials trying to translate the agreement into concrete military demands. NATO leaders are expected to make new decisions in Washington this week, at a summit to mark the 75th anniversary of the Transatlantic Security Alliance. Commenting on the defense plant, a NATO representative said that the alliance's military planners had identified detailed requirements for troops and weapons needed for the defense of the alliance. Air and anti-missile defense, long-range weapons, logistics, as well as large-scale ground military formations are among our main priorities. As we develop the forces and capabilities that can implement our plans and respond to the threats we face, NATO will set even greater goals for its allies. We are confident that our deterrence is and will remain strong, the NATO official said.